Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Simply Pod Logical, a Simply Nail Logical podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Menchie and Zyler, our cats. Yep. I know everyone's going through a rough time right now, but Menchie and Zyler are right there with you. There are better <laughs> days ahead. Yeah, so now you have to follow them on Instagram. It's at Menchie the cat and at Zyler the cat. They asked <laughs> right. us to, to, that was their request for the sponsorship. So. Have you noticed all the commercials lately from like mostly car companies that are trying to like somehow use the current social isolation pandemic situation to be like yeah they're... we're there with you everybody go so, buy a truck so you could cut people off in the parking lot and buy toilet paper i have no idea you could buy socially aware vehicles yeah so it's incredible <laughs> like this technology <laughs> but every commercial is exactly the same right it's the mm -hmm. same music it's the same anyway i don't know how we got on that but uh today we're talking about cats highly requested podcast topic we see the comments all the time people love cats we love cats christine loves cats i am a cat i mean what <laughs> <laughs> if you've been watching the simply neological youtube channel you you will know that cats feature prominently in the videos our cats menchie and xyler and uh, if you've been paying attention we've done some charity work for for cat shelters and rescues in our local cat cafe over the years as well mm -hmm. so clearly we care about cats i think it's fair to say mm -hmm. people know this so you guys have a lot of questions about cats mm -hmm. and before we get into an entire podcast on cats uh just a quick update about the simply neological healthcare worker tab oh yeah. so we announced that at the end of last week's podcast if you didn't see that interview with the canadian uh, um deputy chief D deputy public chief health public health officer, health officer dr new mm -hmm. please go check that out even if you're not canadian i recommend listening to it because i found a lot of people in the comments said like they were from the states or from another country and they found it actually informative to mm -hmm. listen to what he had to say so sure. recommend you go check that out if you haven't already so what ben and i did um is we announced that we were setting up healthcare worker tabs at three different restaurants that healthcare workers could go to in Ottawa, local to us, and get a meal on us. So we've done that and almost all the tabs are out. Yeah, by the time people are listening <laughs> to this, it's likely that the that tabs they're all will be gone. completely gone. Yeah, so that was a huge success. Mm -hmm. um, was, thank you guys for sharing the news if you were local in Ottawa. Yeah. Um, that definitely helped out and we were able to, at the end of the day, feed how many S around 700 healthcare workers got a meal on us something like that and yeah Which we just so saw cool. a lot of positive comments and i was we spoke a bit to the people at our contacts at those restaurants involved and they said it was just an overwhelmingly positive, positive thing, so. yeah and they were so happy to be able to be a part of it and yeah. we we're grateful to them as well for like agreeing to do this because obviously we had to clear it with them make sure mm -hmm. like this wasn't gonna cause chaos of any form so yeah. we're just really excited that 700 healthcare workers in ottawa got to eat a free meal so it was just like super fun nice thing and i yeah. i just really loved seeing like tweets and people would send me pictures of like i got your meal like it's so cool and, and nice. you're right like thank you guys for helping share that in the community because mm -hmm. local media didn't pick it up for some reason no the local so. media don't care about youtubers <laughs> it's true unless it's something bad they don't give a shit is that it's kind of true right yeah isn't that kind of sad i feel like you... that's a whole other podcast the Ooh, media let's get into that YouTubers. another time because yeah. yeah there's been a few times i've been kind of disappointed in our local media for not uh, oh well not that we do charity stuff to get like a pat on the back or attention no. but it literally was just a matter of we wanted people, people in, the community in ottawa to know because obviously not everyone in ottawa follows me so they don't know that this exists so i just relied on my followers to share it with their local ottawa healthcare worker friends yeah and it still went super quick so yeah I, that wasn't an issue okay anyways cats, cats you cats. guys have a lot of questions about cats we asked on twitter instagram facebook all those a places. record number of questions oh is that true i think yeah at least on you instagram was, was cats <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's just jump right into it then all right first question christine how did you come to get your cats what was the adoption process like and are you guys planning on getting another baby cat well soon? it was a home birth um <laughs> <laughs> It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so I guess this is an opportunity for first question just to sort of give a little bit of a history of our two cats. So My cats are my children. Okay. But yes. Okay, that's not an answer. They, they, they are. We adopted them. So you got Zyler before <laughs> I was in the picture. So how, how did that happen? Zyler was the first man in my house. 
Oh, yes. Just so yeah, Ben knows now. <laughs> okay. So I got Zyler in second year university. Zyler is now, I think, 12 years old, something like that, mm-hmm. whatever. I'm, clearly, I'm very old now. I've been yourself. a long time since university. But I got him after I'd moved out of residence and I was now living in a home with some roommates. Mm-hmm. And my roommates had to agree that I yeah. was going to get a cat. <laughs> so yeah. they all said fine whatever because they got to play with him so it was kind of like a fun thing to do but it was ultimately like it was my cat I, like i was the one who who got him who mm-hmm. cared for him who paid for his litter his litter box was literally in my room because my roommates didn't want the litter box like randomly yeah, elsewhere yeah. like it, it just wasn't fair so i had to you know it was literally in my room and was it like it was something you were planning for or was it more of like a spur of a moment thing? No. I'm out of residence, now I can have a cat. Oh, our first visitor, it's Menchi. <laughs> Menchi, baby. She's mad we're talking about her brother. Yeah. <laughs> she gets enough attention. Um, I had a cat growing up and I think this is another question, so I'll hold on that for now. But mm-hmm. it stayed with my parents once I went to university just because like you're not going to take a cat out of the home that they're comfortable in, mm-hmm. even though I like was attached to that cat. Yeah. I decided like I wanted my own responsibility of my own cat and once I moved out on my own yes I had roommates but whatever it was like basically yeah. misindependent now all of a sudden and mm-hmm. I'm gonna take care of my cat and do my schoolwork kind of thing so it gave me like a fun sense of purpose and like duty to have and raise my cat Siler so and then he sure. came with me everywhere after that and we moved a lot actually because yeah. I went from I think three different three or four different houses with different roommates for a while while I was still in university okay. so Zyler's you know lived lots of places he's, he's well traveled yeah. yeah I remember yeah when we first met Zyler was uh yeah not only did he not like me we'll get into that a little <laughs> bit but he seemed kind of like you had moved into a condo pretty recently around the time we met yeah and i remember that was like an issue for him because he had been you had had i think you had been renting like a house with a few other people or you had much more space before i used to have stairs yeah. that was a big thing so Zyla so you, was used to stairs so you got your own condo which is great but it was a downgrade in space right so right. you could tell it kind of was driving him nuts yeah he was going a little itchy and crazy that he couldn't like go up on the second floor or just run around the house because it was literally like a condo so you run from one side to the other pretty quickly so we notice he's much happier now in a in a bigger house yeah we really just bought a house for the cats now he 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 just wanted stairs my baby wanted stairs i get my baby stairs (laughs) (laughs) okay so and what do you remember what the adoption process was like or honestly i was very young i think i was 18 no 19 i would have been so I don't really remember like it was so long ago and I did have like a roommate come with me and help me figure it out so I don't really remember as clearly as I remember the Menchi process because I feel like over the years the whole processes and like things from like chipping and Mm -hmm. all these forms and vaccinations have become a lot clearer and far more better documented on the part of like the adoption process giving it to you and making you informed than at least it was when I adopted Zyler like 12 years ago. Yeah, so to jump to Menchie, we got her we got her together. It was sort of like a group fun thing. We're evolving as a couple. Let's get a cat together. And I remember some people Let's in our life thinking like, oh, are you sure that's a good idea getting another cat? But uh, I think we had made up our minds. So we walk into a PetSmart, which is just a, a local pet store chain. But it's not like a pet store. They're, the cats they have there are from the Humane Society. Which wasn't always the case because when I got Siler, that wasn't the standard yeah yeah we've talked yeah. about this off camera we you don't remember I, if he was a i honestly or not. don't know i am not positive that's Zy- sorry correct because i did say adoption and i don't actually know that for sure for Zyler. i'm not positive that he yeah. was a truly an adopted like rescue cat yeah i think they're pretty much illegal in our province right. now or they're they've at least phased them but out lots of things have changed like previously chained pet stores didn't have adoption cats at all yeah like when i got Zyler, that was not standard um, now it is, or at least from what I've seen, and most mm-hmm. like the main chains, they're always like adoption rescue cats. Yeah. Yeah, and there's really no reason why you shouldn't be adopting a cat. Like it's a good thing that pet stores don't really exactly. Exist anymore. I mean, the only not a valid reason, but a reason that I see people like seeking to purchase cats is because they want specific like designer breeds of cats. Yeah. Which is not something that I personally do or want to do sure we didn't pick menchi or xyler because they're some designer fancy breed they're literally just like i don't know a tabby yeah cat. we often see questions like what kind of cat are menchi and xyler we're like just i don't know orange and normal white and gray <laughs> <Tabby>. like, <nothing. laughs> yeah 
Yeah. So Menchie, we walk into a pet spot and we see two. She had a brother there. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. So there were two cats. I actually, that's one of my big regrets. I feel sad. You about wanted to it. get both of them. <gasps> ben, we could have had twins. Looking back, I wonder if we should have gotten both. I thought could've... that the brother was already adopted. That might be the case. I think so. But so we were asking the staff there to see the yeah. cats and you you picked up Menchi and she just immediately started licking your face, right? Menchi! <laughs> so it's like she chose you in a way. She chose me. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't get her right away because we yeah. thought we shouldn't make this like an impulse, right. impulse so decision. Right, we, so we left. Let's go home and sleep thought on about it. it. And then I was like, we have to go back and get that cat. That's Menchi. We, we knew her name before we, we got her. Yeah. Actually, we knew that we would name her Menchi. And I remember we went and like waited outside of... <laughs> <laughs> the pet smart before it opened to make sure no one swooped in there before <laughs> oh us. yeah we were crazy we're <laughs> yeah, like no yeah. one will take our menchie <laughs> yeah and we did have the name picked out before yeah. isn't that weird like she's named after a frozen yogurt chain <laughs> in, in ottawa or that we just <laughs> i think it's ontario think i'm it's, not sure yeah is it just canada i'm Menchie's not sure menchie's frozen yogurt not because I necessarily love their frozen no, yogurt No, it's actually or pretty bad. Okay, I well, think. I wasn't going to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but we just thought that was a cute name for a yeah. cat. Yeah. And Zyler, because uh, I know people want to know his name too. Oh, yeah. I just was just trying to be cool and edgy, and I took, like, a random boy's name, Tyler, and just, like, put a, a Z on it instead. That's <laughs> Very all. edgy. Yeah. My 19-year-old Christine <laughs> named her cat Zyler. All right, so last part of this question, are you guys planning on getting another baby cat? This was by far the most common question we saw. Are we planning on getting another cat? I feel I like don't that's... Know, let me check. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very... They have such a good dynamic, too. Mm-hmm. We'll get into their routines and how they get along and all that, but I really worry because I've had friends who have like got a new cat, introduced it to the group, and all of a sudden, all of them don't get along yeah. anymore. It's a scary thing and it's a delicate balance the power structure between pets in your home sometimes and also i'm allergic to cats it's already a lot well, for me <laughs> dealing with uh, cat hair no you're so not la 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 can't another hear you another <laughs> cat shedding hair all over the place i, I don't know about that the, the robot vacuums and uh, air purifiers help but i just i don't know if we're in a good place right now like both our cats are pretty needy and we give them a lot of attention I don't know if adding another cat to the mix makes a ton of sense for us right now. Yeah, like, of course I would love another cat. I don't know. I just, like, it's just fun and I just want all the cats all over me, you know? know. <laughs> but I also don't want to disturb Menchie and Zyler's happiness because they seem, like, really well balanced right now. Yeah. So I'm just nervous about what it would mean. That's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, next question. Why did you decide to get a cat while still in university and did Zyler distract you from your studies at all? I mean, he was a welcome distraction that gave me a better sense of responsibility than just like going out and drinking, which I still did. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but yeah. just the fact that I had to go home to my cat and like make sure I had to wake up to feed him. You didn't take Zyler to the club with you? No, or? he wasn't of age. <laughs> <He> <laughs> I, tried, wasn't... I tried to get him a fake ID, but like they said no. <laughs> no, I, I mean, of course you're going to have some things that distract you during university. It's just like what sure. kinds of things that you want and feel is appropriate for you. So for me, having a cat, which I'd already had kind of growing up, um, mm-hmm. was the perfect thing. It just, and I liked that responsibility. I loved always having my cat there. Like it didn't matter if my room, roommates were being assholes. I got my cat, you know, <laughs> like crazy cat lady person who likes cats more than humans. Crazy cat it. lady yeah. at 21. I would also argue that... Uh... The responsibility of a cat as opposed to a dog when you're in university and still becoming an adult is probably more manageable. Manageable, yeah. Of course, I only got a cat because I knew that I could manage having a cat because I'd already had one, Mm -hmm. right? I didn't just like off a whim, I'm just going to get a cat. And I think that might be in some cases irresponsible if you don't know, like if you can afford supplies for your cat, does it have a good space to live? Like, So I made sure I had all those things in place and then I was able to take care of him. Okay. And then from Allie Rose, what are your cat's daily routine? Well, maybe we could ask them to like (laughs) vlog their daily life. A Day in My Life by Menchie. (laughs) I bought a a dog harness for the GoPro once, thinking we could strap it to the cats and we could have made a video about like 
what are they doing today? But it wasn't working. They didn't like wearing it. And... It just kept falling like around their trunk to their stomachs. Yeah. And then it would just be like dragging against the floor. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out. I still think that would have been funny. Yeah. But uh, uh, do you want to explain? So Christine wakes up before me and Menchie's usually Every day. waiting for you. In Are the we bathroom. really detailing like our cat's daily routine? Let's just give Do a people brief. People actually want to know this. Ninety percent of it is sleeping, but uh, yeah. you wake up. The cats are waiting for you. They want to eat, basically. I wake up. The cats are waiting for me. Yeah, Menchie's always by the toilet because she knows I'm going <laughs> to sit there first. <laughs> so she's waiting by my feet there already. Yeah. Zyla's usually on the bed, and he just gets up when I get up. Yeah. And then I go downstairs, and they both run after me downstairs, uh -huh. and then they go meow meow, and they want yeah. their food. So I make their food and then I feed Menchie first because she takes longer to eat That's than right. Zyler. And if you feed, uh, oh, hello Zyler, <laughs> Zyler's <laughs> on the table now. If Menchie doesn't finish her food and Zyler had already finished his quickly, he will go eat her food. Yeah. So you have to kind of time Zyler it. Zyler loves his food. You have to time it perfectly so Menchie has a long time to eat her food while mm -hmm. you're still preparing Zyler's and like stalling. So he's just standing by you and waiting and waiting and waiting. And then I'll put his dish down right when she's about to finish her yeah. food. Yeah. I think the rest of the day for them, for Menchie, it's she's just will spend some time deciding where she's going to sleep the rest of the day. She has it's very hard her decisions. pumpkin bed, her Christmas tree bed, the guest room queen mattress. You know, the she bed has by her my places. office window. She likes the office window bed. Yeah, she likes lately. looking out the windows lately. Mm -hmm. Wondering what life outside of quarantine is like. And Zyla too is like, they sleep a lot. Cats sleep a lot. That's normal. Like yeah. it's important to kind of be active with your cats and we play with them and stuff as well. But they mostly just want to take it easy, especially they're they're at an age. They're not very young or kittens anymore right yeah so yeah but i i don't know i still think they're active sometimes they they run around so like in the midday they'll be mostly sleeping mm -hmm. uh, but then when it's getting closer to at least our dinner time like now they kind of get up and they're wondering what are you doing where are you going i'm gonna rub my face on your shit you know yeah they <laughs> they want to be around us xyler can be very needy for attention i'd say more than menchie menchie's a little more independent mm-hmm like, for example, Zyler, when we're going to bed, he needs to be in bed with you. He, oh, like, yeah. Who doesn't? <laughs> I can relate. But uh, <laughs> Menchie kind of does her own thing, you know? She'll, it's almost like she needs to do a tour of the entire house before she can settle down for the She's night. She's security. Yeah, she basically does a sweep. We hired Menchie to do the security for our house. <laughs> she goes to, like, every room in the house, makes sure everything's okay. And then and sometimes then she, she joins yeah. us for bed, sometimes she doesn't. She she just kind of does her own thing. Whereas Zyler... He'll get agitated like if you're staying up too late and he's like, you're he's breaking like, our it's routine. Time it's to go time to bed. for us it's to, time go to go to bed. bed. I'm, yeah, he's kind of like me in that way. <laughs> <laughs> both the cats have adopted some elements of your personality. Yeah, I would say. they're both insane. Yeah, hi, buddy. Yeah. All, All right. right, next question. Uh, what are the best qualities about Menchie and Zyler? Also, how did each cat get their name? I think so. We already covered the name thing. So. What are what are the qualities of Menchie and Zyler? Well, I think Zyler is, you know, a very debonair, fancy individual. He's just yeah. He's how do you figure? He has uh, <laughs> independence and prowess. He knows what he wants, and he's not afraid to to say what he wants. <laughs> Zyler is. He's a confident <laughs> kitty. He's a weird mix of like needy and temperamental. Like he'll decide he really needs your love and attention. But then he can quickly turn into like grumpy old man cat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. a little. Whereas Menchie's much more of a, a sweet sweetie. heart. Yeah, like she wouldn't eat a fly. Even if it <laughs> tasted like salmon, she would not eat it. But she can be a bit aloof and, you know, maybe you're just not going to see her for a few hours and you don't know where she is. It's because she's hiding under some bed sheets or she, she has more of a scaredy cat impression. So I think the to answer the question the best qualities uh -huh. about Zyler I'd say Zyler is really intelligent like he's smart he knows not to get excited about treats if he knows you're not actually in the right cupboard like cool. he, he like he's smart he doesn't he's waste smart, his like, energy he knows how yeah. to open doors smart he knows how to yeah. open doors he knows if you're <laughs> tricking him which has been a problem him. in the like, past <laughs> yeah he knows if you're like tricking him or you're in the wrong cupboard whereas Menchie's kind of dumb and she's like meowing thinking you're getting treats when clearly it's like not that exact cupboard <laughs> yeah, yeah but he he doesn't exhaust his energy unless he has to and he knows it's gonna get him ahead in life. he'll he'll wait for menchie to beg for treats right. let her do all the work and, and then, then he'll slide them, in yeah. there yeah. so xyler's really intelligent 
He is a very smart Menchie's guy. Menchie's like just a big sweetheart. I think that's her best quality. She's just such a little sweetie. She'll just roll around for you, just let you rub her tummy. Yeah. She's just like a big suck. She doesn't really trust strangers, and maybe we could have done a better job if anyone out there is raising a kitten. I think it is important or a smart idea to have them meet some of your friends and stuff when yeah. they're young. Socialize So them. they get the, yeah, exactly. With so they humans. get used to other people and not being afraid of them. I do wonder if she maybe had a rough kittenhood because yeah. she seemed very afraid of people and we didn't have the opportunity because it was just us living um in the condo at the time like we didn't yeah. have a bunch of people over whereas no. Zyler grew up with like living with five guys and like random people every weekend <laughs> yeah so that's why Zyler's so. super social if, if a yeah. random person is over he's coming up to greet them he's almost yeah too brave he's very okay. interested like he'll paw at their jeans or something he'll be like hello <laughs> like pet yeah. me i don't know who you are but but menchie is very cautious and i should say i think we're lucky in both cases that they are at least somewhat social menchie at least with us because yeah. i have friends who have cats who are like always hide under yeah the that bed. cat's just under the couch all day and yeah. i never see them and it's kind of like that's that's sad and hopefully I, I guess some cats are just like that i don't know if you could completely socialize but uh all right Next question. What is the weirdest thing Menchie and Zyla do? My cats do some pretty <laughs> weird stuff sometimes. I don't know. Is that going to, he's going to bite you if you say anything bad about him right now. <laughs> if he's on too. Uh, Zyler's meow, I think, is the weirdest thing. Zyler does this like warble, wolf-like meow that's yeah. very deep in the in his throat. You want to do he, an impression? I don't know. This is going to kill like? all the audio listeners. Just, just put the mic away. Okay. He goes like. Does that sound right? <laughs> like it sounds like a warbling wolf and we'll hear it from the basement and then i'll just yell Zyler, like i'm right here and then he'll go and then i'll run upstairs <laughs> yeah so cats don't meow to each other by the way uh, they cats meow because they know humans according to research yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I'm not a cat expert but we're aware of this and I think he must have realized at some point like that the more annoying or strange his meow is, the more we were going to reply to it. That's Well, that's what I do. The more annoying I am to you, the more response I get. Oh, yeah. Because I think I really started noticing we had to put him on a diet at one point because I like, took him to the vet and he weighed close to like 20 pounds or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the vet was like, oh, he should probably be closer to 15. Five pounds weight loss doesn't sound like a lot. But if you only weigh 20 pounds, that's 25% <laughs> of your... It's like a 200-pound person needing to weigh yeah, 150 well, pounds, right? It took several, several months. Well, probably like a year. It took a long total, time, yeah, but yeah. we had to put him on a diet. And I swear yeah. for that entire however many months that was, he was like, if was you're going to make me go on a diet, I'm going to torture you every <laughs> night. So every night at like 3, 4, 5 a.m., he would just start howling. Yeah. And it like we put up with that for so long and there's like nothing to do. Like you can't really discipline a cat, like punish them. Like you wanna with your pet you wanna positively reinforce good behavior rather than punish bad behavior, right? Mm -hmm. So we were really struggling. But cats won't what, listen. What? So like no. you'll give him a treat when he's not meowing and then he'll <laughs> still meow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we just put up with him like I didn't get a good sleep <laughs> for like nine months or something yeah. because of you. That's okay. That's what having children is like, you know. <laughs> oh, but, but he's a he's a healthy weight now. So what uh, weird stuff does Menchie do? Well, Menchie sits on your shoulders. That's, that's a weird pretty, thing. Like there's a lot what of shoulder cats. What do you mean that's cats. normal? That's, lot... that's what parrots do. That's normal for parrots. <laughs> yeah, she has her weird squawks too. Men What's a weird thing Menchie does? She likes jumping in the fridge. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's kind of a scary thing. <laughs> Which started at the condo because the fridge was on the floor level. Yeah. So it was easy for her as a kitten to just like jump up in the fridge and be like, ooh, it's cold in here. <laughs> Didn't you leave her in the fridge once? Oh, you're going to blame me oh for this? Oh my God, that totally happened. <laughs> okay, so we've never lost the cats. They are, they are indoor cats too. We think that's the responsible thing to do as cat owners. But uh, yeah, one time I guess we lost Menchi for five or ten minutes because... She was still quite young at the time, and we could hear her <laughs> meowing, but we couldn't find her. And this was in the condo, so like yeah. she has to be close. Oh yeah, the condo was like a bedroom, a den, a living area, and a bathroom, right? Like there wasn't that many places to look. And I remember we were scrambling around. We were freaking and... out. I was so, I'm like, I don't understand. Is she like behind a wall? <laughs> yeah, it didn't make any sense. And finally we opened the fridge and she comes <laughs> barreling out. She's, she was like cold too. <laughs> We left our cat in the fridge. Oh uh, my god! It's her fault. Like she would literally—you'd open it a crack just to grab something, and she would just she'd dart into in the there. fridge. Yeah. And I, 
is that normal? Do you do if you guys have cats? Weird. Is that something they do? But it's like it's not like she was licking stuff in there. She literally just wanted to like have a seat just in the fridge. Just wanted to chill. Just wanted to cool off. Yeah, scroll back in her Instagram to early days, and there's probably some fridge pictures of Menchi. And now to this day, our fridge it's our fridge now is higher though. Like you have to jump up to get yeah. in the fridge. You have to jump up. <laughs> <laughs> Have do you jump. have to jump no. up <laughs> but so we'll open the fridge and she'll just jump from the floor into the fridge and i always have to pick her up and be like no man yeah. she go back to the what your chair yeah, she's a weirdo uh how did you guys get menchi to sit on ben all the time so we don't do anything we don't put menchi on ben's shoulders <laughs> it's just it became a routine we started sitting down for dinner and she would jump up on just your shoulders and i think it's because your shoulders are wider yeah, more <laughs> like surface area more comfortable to sit on mm -hmm. and she likes the smell of your earwax she does like licking my ear but i think it's out of it's, affection not no for i the think taste. it's because you have nasty funky tasting <laughs> earwax and menji likes it <laughs> so when we got her as a kitten i would pick her up quite a bit and she just sort of naturally wanted to crawl around our shoulders and stuff. And when she was a kid and she could fit on both of our shoulders. And I remember you telling me, like, don't pick her up all the time when she's meowing at you because she'll just always want to be picked up. Mm -hmm. So maybe it is kind of a so reflection of the way parenting. we raised her. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind at but all. But it's funny, a few times when Ben hasn't been at the dinner table and like I was just eating, mm -hmm. she'll come up on my back or like on the, the back of the chair behind me because Ben's not there. Yeah. Or remember one time we had your sister over a few oh, months back oh, yeah. and she was sitting where I normally sit. And she jumped up on and my And then she just out of like her automatic routine, yeah, jumped up on Jen's shoulders and Jen was like, oh my God. But I, and <laughs> then she seemed like, confused, like this doesn't seem quite right. She's like, where's the Ben shoulders? <laughs> Uh, from Rosie Forsberg, did you grow up with cats? So yeah, you already alluded to the fact. So that you I grew had up. yeah. So I had one cat, Mango, that I got when I was fourteen. Man or Mango. Mango. Yeah. Okay. Fourteen or fifteen. Mango is still alive, actually. Yeah. He's with my mother right now, <laughs> but he's, wow, he's he, still how alive. Old is he? I was fourteen or fifteen. Do the math quick. How old are you now? Thirty. Thirty-one. Yeah. So you're fifty. He's at least sixteen years old. Yeah. yeah? Wow. Yeah. That's getting up there. So Mango's an orange cat, very similar to mm -hmm. Xyler, actually. Similar kind of in personality. Maybe it's just an orange cat thing, like mm -hmm. independent, confident, sometimes an asshole. Although <laughs> Xyler is far more sociable and like with humans because he had way more humans than Mango did. But I like raised or whatever, like me and my sister sort of and sure. my parents less so because they didn't really want a cat. It was me who wanted a cat. Oh, okay. Um, got mango when mango is a little baby like an eight week or ten week old kitten okay. in high school just as some way to i guess teach us some responsibility and like change the litter the litter was in mine and my sister's bathroom at the time okay. and yeah. yeah um but yeah so that's just just the one cat mango is what i've had so i learned how to take care of a cat and, and realized i loved cats yeah. it didn't make sense you don't want to exactly i wasn't gonna take... uproot mango out of his comfortable home you know and bring him all the way to ottawa because i grew up in the toronto area i just mm -hmm. like didn't think it was fair and i knew oh actually the a bigger reason was that um i was moving into me. i was moving into university residence Oh shit, it looks like Xyler has found the treats <laughs> that we thought we were hiding when we were being so sly without shaking them yet. So Xyler has in interrupted this podcast. Xyler, you're as annoying as an ad. <laughs> they weren't really hidden. See, this is the smart Xyler though, right? <laughs> then she hasn't noticed the What treats. do I do? Should I give him one? Sure. Wolf. There you go. Wolf, Jesus. <laughs> See, he's a wolf. Okay, I'm going to put a couple on the table. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Menchie heard. Uh-oh. What have we done? I didn't grow up with pets, actually. So <laughs> Menchie was my first cat. Do you want to feed them? Well, Xyler was your first adopted cat. Yeah, but I didn't really have the experience of, you know, raising him the way you did. So I don't feel like, yeah, I consider Xyler my cat, and they're both our cats yeah. now. <laughs> oh, my God. Guys, guys. <laughs> guys, calm down. <laughs> But I think yeah, having a cat or having a pet as a kid in general, I think is a good way of teaching a kid responsibility. Mm -hmm. and I'm kind of annoyed that my parents never gave me that opportunity. I remember my sister begging our parents to get to us get a dog. Animal. Yeah. And I kind of get it because often it just, 
becomes the parent's responsibility if the kids don't actually properly take care of that animal. But at the same time, I feel like everyone who had a pet growing up, that is a very enriching experience, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree. I'm happy to have had the opportunity to raise raise a cat, um, you know, yeah. and then it prepared me for knowing that I wanted a cat when I was older and I like knew what the deal was. <laughs> so, yeah. That's okay. You have cats now, sweetie. <laughs> That's right. Uh, next question. Before Menchie and Zyler, did either of you guys own a dog? And do you ever see yourself having a dog sometime in the future? So no, neither of us have had dogs. The only animals we've had have been cats. And then I had a rabbit, actually. A rabbit named T-Bar, which is rabbit spelled backwards. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. I was like 12 when I named him. <laughs> uh, but and no, yeah, no, no dog. I, I, maybe dogs are so much more work than cats i think mm -hmm. so yeah a lot of responsibility maybe one day when we're like retired and stuff i also feel like you don't have to be a cat person or a dog person a lot of people are just like oh so you hate dogs because you love cats so much I'm like i don't hate dogs i just have a preference for cats just because yeah. i don't know I, I just like their cuddliness i like their size i like their temperament mm -hmm. and and ben's right honestly though like you need to know and be confident in the amount of work that it is to take care of a dog, which is generally more than the average cat. Taking the dog for walks, it has certain like energy needs, you know, it, it has to meet. Um, feeding times might be a little more strict than cats. Some cats, like you can just give them kind of unlimited food and they'll just allocate it themselves. Uh, but dogs are generally more work and it just wasn't something that suited me at the, at the times of my life when I got a pet anyway. So it just wasn't an option for me at the time. I think the biggest difference from talking to dog owners too is that you really have to earn the love of a cat. Like I think a lot of dog owners make fun of cat people for like, oh, that cat doesn't love you. They just, mm. they just want Use food. Use you for treats. Whereas when I look at dog people, it kind of seems like you just, the dog has built into it and its evolution and its training is it, it just loves you. It wakes up loving you. Like at a certain point is that is it less rewarding in a way just because you have this animal that like worships you all the time? Whereas a, a cat, I feel if a cat is showing you affection when it doesn't want anything from you, that to me seems like a much more rewarding thing. So you want a challenge. It's more of a challenge. You've earned their <laughs> affection and respect. Ben likes Whereas dogs cats. just wake up in the morning and they can't wait for you to tell them to go get a ball, you know? Even if you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, let's not get into that. <laughs> All right, next question. Do cats get excited about their owners like dogs do? Oh, hmm. well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yes. Zyler clearly, you know, gets excited about hanging out with you and us and men she yeah. will sometimes want to cuddle with us and yeah, yeah they like, show us affection it's not all the time like it's not like their tails are wagging and they're going crazy every time we come home from somewhere kind of thing um they're a little more uh like subdued in their but they'll often come run zyler will come running to the door yeah, when we some, get home sometimes yeah you're right exactly yeah. and men she sometimes will have her sweet moments and she'll just sit on my lap while i'm trying to work on the computer and she'll be yeah. like mom mom so very I, I think my cats get very excited about us. <laughs> I mean, look at them. You know, they're right here on the table. It has with nothing right to do now. with it the treats. It has nothing to do with the treats that are in, in, on my lap under the table. <laughs> uh, another question. Uh, I love animals and hearing about people's pets. What are their favorite treats? Do they do any tricks and do they sleep in the bed with you? Do they do any tricks? Um, generally cats aren't good at tricks because they're not really like that disciplined. However, uh -huh. Xyler is like a circus cat and you can throw him a treat from far away and he'll catch it in his mouth in one shot. Kind of like how humans catch popcorn. Yes. Well, not me. I can't do that, but you know, other people. He's <laughs> it's really not good the, at that. the most impressive thing in the world, but I guess I think for it's a impressive. cat, that's... Pretty... Menchie can't do that at all. She's, it just like hits her in the face. <laughs> Menchie realized though that we found it cute when she rolls over onto her back. <gasps> Good and point. she uses that to her advantage and yeah. uh, we're more likely to give her treats if she's, she's like just... she rolls over she's like you think i'm cute <laughs> give me a treat i would keep a... looking so cute until you give me a treat what a lady and yeah xyler needs to sleep with christine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so he'll like mount me and he'll sleep on my thigh <laughs> like he'll just prop himself he's up he's like with a butt paws. cat right like he yeah I, I like it because I like the warmth. It's like a heating pack, oh, so it's really nice. <laughs> Whereas Menchie, she doesn't always come to bed, but when she does, she, she'll she like 
scooch in right between our two pillows, mm-hmm. which is pretty adorable. Yeah, or she'll sleep beside me in her little cat bed. Which it's true, is right we have a little bed, bed right It's like a me. crib. You know, I've, the baby <laughs> sleeps in the crib. <laughs> okay, dear. Oh, and their favorite treats are feline greenies. I'm not going to shake the bag again because they're both like a little insane. They can have some more. More? Dad, wow. Dad said more treats. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh-oh. We'll spoil them today. Oh, everyone, come <laughs> okay, to the hunting ground. Okay, I'll keep ans- a- answering questions while you The hunting ground is here. Uh, another question. How long did it take Xyler to accept Ben? <laughs> my orange boy is not a fan of my boyfriend at all, and it's been a real struggle. Uh, I'm not sure how useful this answer will be for you, Laura. It took a long time for him to get used to me. Yeah, mm-hmm. as when I started sleeping over... I would often wake up in the middle of the night to him like biting my feet or him like pretty much attacking me. Yeah. <laughs> it took a long time to get bite over your that. Feet, like for real. What I'd say is I think he was kind of testing me in a way because I wasn't really comfortable. That's like my first time living with a cat. I wasn't super comfortable with cats and I think he could sense that. So sometimes he would run out of the condo and we'd have to get him, right? Remember, like, sometimes we'd open the front door and he'd run out into the hall? If I went to go get him, he would, like, lie down and I'd, like, reach to go pick him up and he'd, like, be threat... Like, he'd be in a threatening pose as if he was going to attack me. But I realized he only really did that because he sensed that I was kind of uncomfortable with just grabbing him. If I had just confidently picked him up, he would have been okay with that. So it's kind of a delicate mm. balance there, but I think it's only when I started being more confident in my handling of him yes. that he started, like, I guess, having to respect me in a way. So That's interesting because yeah. there's probably some elements of, like, how to train your dog in what you just said. Like, you have to show them that you are, like, in control of uh-huh. the situation. We're Whereas, obviously not experts like, in training. He was smart, but... and he picked up on the fact that I wasn't confident in how I was dealing with him. But once you were confident and you would say strictly like no or you'd pick him up and you'd move him so he's yeah. not biting your feet, he eventually... And yeah, I got like scratched and even bitten a few times, I think, doing yeah, this, but... Was, I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, at the end of the day, it made a world of difference once I started just being mm-hmm. confident and like... And then he stopped biting your feet. He hasn't tried to hurt you. No, it's been, it's been many <laughs> Unless years. Unless I sick him on you. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I'm sure there's resources online, though, you can find for more advice on that. Yeah. Uh, another one do you believe that our pets really understand what we are saying to them and do you think they can be reincarnated i don't know menchi are you so beautiful yes you are you're going to win a beauty pageant start your own youtube channel yeah she, so she, she i knows, think she understands she understands <laughs> <laughs> she they know their name i think there's been enough studies now to show that cats like know when we're saying they know their name but they choose to not always respond exactly I think, is the yeah. science <laughs> <laughs> which yeah is kind of funny but uh No, well, or like even when we say treats, I think they have a very basic understanding of some words, maybe. It might just be your intonation as well, just that you're saying something with your voice and it's going high and sounds exciting. It gets their attention as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know about... I know that Menchi... So we recently bought a massage gun, like (laughs) a Theragun, because when Christine's doing her workout, sometimes she's sore after and you basically massage your legs with this gun, right? And it can be really painful. And so, oh, like, yeah. I'm massaging Christine's hamstrings, mm. and she's basically, like, scree- <laughs> screaming in pain, but it's, like, a good, good kind yeah, of pain, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you just have to be vocal because you're, like, breathing as you're getting into the muscles. So I'm like, ah! Yeah, so we've noticed a few times Menchi, if Menchi thinks Christine's in distress... She'll come. She'll come and start licking, licking your, my face. your face, like your tears, right? And, like, making sure I'm okay. She's yeah. so sweet, and I'm like, Menchi! Gee, I'm okay. And then she'll be like licking, licking my face. Like, what's going on? What's going on? Why are you I yelling? think that's because that's the only real tool cats have to like nurture or comfort is to groom other so like, animals. So now I know that if I were in this house being murdered, she'd come and lick my face. <laughs> That'd be a lot of help. Xyler doesn't do that. He just sits no, there observing. He doesn't care. It's just like, oh, the human experiences pain. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, another question how did Xyler react when you first adopted Menchi I'm thinking of adopting a kitten but I have an eight-year-old cat Mm. how did you introduce them to each other to make it work this is a good question because this is definitely something you need to consider before getting a second animal right is like what is the temperament of your first animal because you are going to introduce and a new pet into its territory basically 
Right? Yeah, it's not all it's not all about the new baby. And we could talk <laughs> about our experience a little, but like we're not experts on this. I'm sure you can find a lot of resources yeah. online for different methods of approaching us. For us, the most important thing was just very slowly Slow. introducing Menchie to Zyler. So we were lucky in that we had a back room in that condo. That it was, was the nail polish filming room yeah. in the condo. And there was a sliding door. Mm -hmm. So we decided to split up the cats so they didn't actually meet face to face for two weeks. I think it might it have even been more than that. It might have been more than two weeks. But two weeks was was what we were told, like based on our research on the internet and like what the people mm -hmm. at the adoption center said. That's what they recommended, especially for for Zyler's benefit, really, who'd already been living in that condo for a couple of years sure. now, so it was like his space. So mm -hmm. for two weeks, Menchie only lived in the nail polish room, which was fine. She was like a small kitten, so yeah. it's fine. And Zyler lived in the rest of the condo, and they would just smell each other under the door. Uh -huh. So they didn't actually like, and we tried to make them not able to touch by putting towels under the door, so they That's weren't right. like able to get each other's hands. But Zyler was super hands, curious. <laughs> he he really wanted to get in there. Eh? Yeah, he it was distressing for sure because he could smell that there was another cat there. Uh -huh. But I think it was the best way to get them used to each other's scents. Mostly like Zyler getting used to Menchie's scent mm -hmm. and giving Menchie some time to just adjust to us too. Yeah, apparently there are also these like pheromone thing. We didn't do this, but I've heard like you can plug in these things that emit pheromones that can help relax yeah. cats or put them in a good mood Actually, or something. Actually, we did do that when we moved into this place. That's right, okay. So I bought two and plugged them in. I don't really Who know for if sure that if that anything. helped, but I, I was worried about moving, mm -hmm. you know, because especially men, she, she'd only been in one place her whole life. Yeah. So when we moved, I was like a little nervous, but they were both fine with that. But in terms of in introducing to uh, them to each other, I think it was really taking into consideration like your your first pet, like Xyler in this case, because he needed to feel comfortable and like not too agitated and very slow. So he didn't feel like you were all of a sudden paying too much attention to someone other than him, you know? And I think Xyler pretty clearly established, once they were interacting and we were supervising that, I think it became pretty clear he was the alpha cat oh he started yeah. licking her immediately and like pushed her down he was like get down i'm gonna lick your face <laughs> yeah so i <laughs> like think aggressive. the dynamic between oh, them kind of works because there's the clear alpha cat and then menchi is happy to be second fiddle in that way in, in a sense yeah and i think maybe that shaped their personalities and that's why Mench yeah. is kind of like the soft sweetie. And they they never really, f like they'll play fight sometimes. And Xyler will maybe occasionally get a little too rough with her. But she's usually the one that instigates it. Yeah. So she clearly <laughs> wants to sort of mess around. And then she'll like, oh, she'll start making me. noises as if like, oh, he's being mean to me. And we look over and we're like, no, like she was the one who was instigating the you situation. Yeah. All right, next question. Do you think it's irresponsible to let your cats go outside without any supervision? Uh, yes. Next question. <laughs> like, is there anything more to it? I mean, like, I, I agree with you, but I think some people who ask this question, like, maybe they they or their family, like, live on a farm and there's just farm cats, and that is just the norm there. So you have to consider, like, there is a whole rural, more population where people just let their cats outside because that's just how it goes. And maybe yeah, their cats I, I, are, like, hunters and stuff. I want to be clear that we should, we don't want to normalize that. No, especially not for city living is what I think. Yeah. Yeah, probably, I guess more so for city living, but r really just in general, you shouldn't be letting your cats just wander around outside. And I guess it's hard if you already have a cat that's doing that to bring them inside. Yeah. seems like you're depriving them of the world they know. And even, even Xyler sometimes, he'll look out the window and yowl as if he wants to go out there. But it's our it. way of, of keeping him safe making sure he's not picking up any diseases by eating like random dirt yeah, or, or dead animals or, or getting hurt yeah pooping in other people's gardens sometimes and giving there, them diseases like. sometimes there's cats like in our neighborhood or other neighborhoods who i'll see a poster that says like our cat is missing and the cat i i know the cat because it's it's an outdoor cat mm -hmm. and so that makes me even more sad because like the cat lived outside and now they can't it makes find me upset him. at the owners for just letting their cats wander around yeah you you shouldn't do that Okay, so we don't okay. support it. <laughs> uh, I was surprised to learn from Ovid that Ben's allergic to cats. Is that difficult to manage? Mm. Did this deter you from having cats before mentioning Zyler? Yeah, so this was like a surprising thing that I guess we never really mentioned before. But despite having two cats, Ben is 
allergic to cats. Yeah, I, I've been planning on like going to an allergist because there are some ways you can sort of treat it, I guess. But I've been putting that off and I'm not going to. Not going now. Not going anywhere now. Uh, I'd say just cleaning the house more, having a robot vacuum did and you, air purifiers helped. But uh, Did you always have a cat allergy? Do you know? I don't know because I didn't have a cat or any pets growing up. But when up. you first started staying at my place when I had Xyler, do you remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember it being bad. But I think it got worse over time, which is strange. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. But there are nights where I'm like, I go to bed and like I can like feel like myself wheezing. And it's because I guess they sleep a lot in the bed or they hang out yeah. in the bedroom a lot during the day. So just to be clear, you're not you're clearly not deathly allergic to cats. Because if that were the case, I'd have to kick Ben out. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's always the question, right? Like who do you pick, right? Do we get rid of the cats? Pick, but my point is, is that you're not so allergic that it's a risk to your life. It's manageable, right but it's definitely yeah. a sacrifice and inconvenience, I yeah. guess. But like... From your perspective, you love the cats. Would you yeah. want to get rid of the cats so you can breathe properly? Yeah, but I'd rather <laughs> not be allergic to them. <laughs> right. So so that's what we want to ultimately do eventually when you can see an allergist is try and yeah. see if there's any. I like, just don't want to be popping reactant and stuff all the yeah. time. Yeah. But that's the goal. We want to have the cats, but we also want to make it more manageable for Ben too. I think we just breathe. need to clean more, honestly, is probably the biggest thing. Maybe I shouldn't organize my nail polish into rainbow order and I should clean the house instead. We should do some real spring cleaning, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, my husband is allergic to cats quite badly. My question is how many to adopt once I kill him? Well, how many cats do you want at the end of the day? How like, many cats does it take to replace a husband? I guess. How many cats question. does it take to kill a husband? <laughs> That's a great YouTube title. <laughs> yeah, how bad are his allergies? Ask how Carol many? Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh from bushy on twitter here's an interesting question what wild animals based on their mm. personalities would mention oh, this is fun so xyler would be a tiger king no no no, the tiger king <laughs> like a tiger yes <laughs> or a lion good question <laughs> <laughs> one of the two like a really old wise tiger it's the lion king <laughs> he's the lion king yeah okay maybe a lion mustafa menchi would be like like a, a little lemur or a ferret <laughs> what? Why? Just like a little derpy animal. <laughs> <laughs> she would be derpy, whatever she is. Uh, will Xyler and Menchie get their own versions of Hollow Taco? The OG polishes are impossible to find. You gotta mm. sip some tea to avoid answering. Mm, should that. I spill some tea just for the for listening this far into the podcast? <laughs> I think you've already teased that there's something in the works. I've mentioned that. Yes, they will come out eventually, but um, I'll spill some actual tea and say I am. We're actively prototyping them right now. Yeah. So I've already got some samples of Menchie and Xyler, just you know, doing some changes, uh, um, moving the tint around a little bit, just yeah. making it like the perfect one. And the goal, like I'm not trying to dupe the originals. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a different formula with the Hollow Taco glitter. Um, formula specifically like because mm -hmm. I want to maintain what hollow taco has done for like our own glitter polish formula yeah. but it's going to be very Xyler and very Menchi so I'm excited that they're now going to get their own hollow taco glitter polishes sure. so keep a keep Yay. an eye out for Yay. that uh, from Facebook have you dealt with difficult health crises with the kitties or have they been fairly healthy I've had many pets I know how scary it is to have a sick pet mm-hmm yeah, so both. So Xyler as well. Maybe less people know this. Yeah. He had crystals when before, he was... this before your time. Yeah, I, think. I wasn't yeah. around. Xyler had crystals, which is common in orange, cat, orange cats. And I think, yeah. although like I could be mistaken because this was a while ago, from my understanding, it's similar to kidney stones in humans, but like a cat version. Um, and it's for, common in male orange cats specifically for some, for some reason. reason. And it usually has something it has to, do to do with, with diet. It right? has to do with their food. So I was a, a university student who was just buying whatever cat food I could at like Loblaws, the local grocery store. It was nothing fancy. And yeah. according to the vet, that's basically what gave him crystals. Yeah. So after that, I started having to buy like expensive veterinarian food that was a mix of both wet and dry um, mm -hmm. that didn't have some of the like bad chemicals or whatever it was that was not um, working in his digestive there system. There are defi definitely a lot of healthier options for how to feed your pets now than there were, there were before. 10, 15 years ago. And I just didn't, ago. didn't know, honestly. Yeah. Like, I wasn't, I didn't know. No, that's fair. 
and I like didn't I didn't want to spend three hundred dollars a month on my cat's food at that time so I I kind of thought that was ridiculous to go buy fancy food I'm like my cat doesn't need fancy food so how bad was it though you have to like rush him to a vet it was yeah this is before I knew that it was the food that was doing doing this but he was urinating blood or at least yeah. it was like kind of red colored. You could see the red so I took him to the vet and they were like, you got here just in time because something got spliced in his insides yeah. and he would have ended up like bleeding out internally. Yeah. Like, yeah. So they did some surgery of some sort on him. Yeah. Um, they had to like draw a bunch of samples, blood samples, urine samples, and concluded that he did have crystals, but luckily it didn't get so far that uh, something was punctured that would have been irreparable. Like okay. it was just early enough that we knew, okay, now we change his diet and yeah. like flush his system basically. And after that, I was, I didn't care how much the food costs. Like yeah. I do not care. And I made sure that I was only feeding him what the vet recommended and and the serving sizes like that they said. Yeah. So that was very scary. And I think he was only three years old at the time. So oh, I was wow. like crying. Yeah. yeah. And he was a... He's a bit of a chunky boy. He's always sort of loved his food, eh? So not was only was hard. he probably not eating the healthiest food, he was probably, he would probably Gorging. binge eat as much as you yeah. would give to him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Zyler. Uh, it's okay. We both learned our lesson, right, bud? Yeah. yeah. Well, good PSA out there. Please care about what kind of... Yeah. Uh, I know it's tough because it can be expensive, but you should be yeah. he- feeding them somewhat healthy food that's not just full of fillers and just not all pure carbs. Yeah. yeah not just like the cheapest option available at the supermarket although i also understand like being a student and that's just what yeah. what's most accessible so i'm not gonna like judge people either sure and then with menchi i think i alluded to this at the very beginning like when we first before we even adopted her we noticed her eye was a little leaky and it progressively turned from her eyes a little leaky to it was like watery to she, she started sneezing. sneezing a lot and you have this really We thought it was an adorable picture of her with like her mouth open when she was a kitten but we looking back at it now it's actually really sad because it was because she was having trouble breathing through her nose that she'd open her her mouth mouth to breathe so she had respiratory issues and we took her to like a a 24-hour hospital yeah so it's a dangerous thing too when a cat's that congested because i think if they can't smell their food they're not going to eat it so i think she right. just stopped eating at a certain that's point why we that's took her, when we and they had to give her, her an id uh, IV. and yeah. this was only a month into having her we had i don't even think it had been a month and we're taking to the animal hospital i remember yeah the really doctor sad. calls me and he's like this is gonna cost a lot of money we didn't have a ton of money at the time and the doctor at the animal hospital was basically asking me like are you sure you want to do this if this is a brand new kitten yeah like basically you could just let the kitten die yeah and i refused i don't, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I don't I mean... care how much it costs so she ended up staying at the what what was most expensive was like just staying under the care of the animal hospital yeah. it, she didn't need surgery or anything but it was just several hundred dollars or more basically to keep her on iv fluids they had yeah. to um, like give her some suppositories I think uh, they were like doing tests on her they were trying to clear her nose airways They're giving antibiotics and then we have yeah. to put her on medication and stuff but yeah there was there was a point at which we didn't know if she was gonna make it and that was a super scary thing even though even though we had barely had her it was she's so she became a part of our family so quickly right and I'm so happy that we made sure that like we weren't giving up and we yeah. we saw it through and I'm, I'm so getting happy. emotional talking <laughs> ben, about this. <laughs> love my kitty. <laughs> okay, my next question. Uh, how well behaved are your cats? Have you trained either any tricks? Do you? How do you discipline them? So yeah, we already mentioned they don't really know tricks. They don't know tricks. <laughs> they but know what to do to get treats. <laughs> yeah, so Zyla will open his mouth and you'll just toss a treat in. But I don't know. How, like I didn't teach him to do that. He just started doing it, and I'm like, wow. I guess the discipline question is more interesting. We're, we're not experts on this, but I think the main thing we should communicate is positive reinforcement over mm-hmm. negative reinforcement, mm-hmm. right? I think it's harder with cats than with dogs, though, because like, if a cat's behaving badly, you can't positively re- reinforce that, and it's not always clear that if you're positively reinforcing them when they're good, that they're, that doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to do the bad thing, right? Right. So there have been times where... I'll admit when we were super frustrated or I was super frustrated with him meowing all night, there were times where I would just yell at him or maybe mm-hmm. we would put him in a back room 
in the yeah. condo and like that was his punishment like go to go to that room but then he learned, then how, he to learned open how to open the door. door he literally <laughs> opened the door like he opened the handle he'd reach it he'd pull it and he'd open the bathroom door and come out he'd be like hey you stupid parents <laughs> so maybe we we're just lucky that they haven't behaved badly in a way where we've really had to correct behavior i feel like they they know though like sometimes our cats are not allowed on the kitchen counters or the kitchen table mm -hmm. and when we're around they they normally don't don't do it but when we're not home and we check the security cameras they're both just sitting on the freaking island in the kitchen just <laughs> loving their lives as soon as, <laughs> just, we leave. as soon as we leave but yeah. when we're home occasionally like i'll be upstairs and then i'll walk downstairs and i'll notice that like menchie's on on the counter because the dishwasher was just on so like the counter's warm or something and then i'll go menchie and i'll like yell at her and then she knows immediately that she's oh, yeah. done something wrong and she'll run off like nothing happened yeah, so yeah. They, they know they not know to do. yeah they know but they do it anyway sometimes <laughs> little rascals maybe we've just given up a little bit no we still yell at them when they're on the table uh, another question have Menchi and Zyler ever gotten lost my cats get lost a few years ago got lost a few years ago but luckily they were all found so they don't get lost because they're they're not outdoor cats yeah. so there's unless they get lost in the house which sometimes I guess we don't always know where they are but <laughs> <It's not that laughs> we'll, we'll find them we'll find them you know uh, just to be fair I know they're it's not only outdoor cat people that lose their cats though, right? Sometimes yeah. you have an indoor cat, maybe really someone out. was over and left the door open and a cat runs out, right? Yeah. Like we had a, oh, yeah. we had a worker over here one time who thought he accidentally let Zyla out. But really there was just some orange cat in the neighborhood that happened to be hanging out around our house. And he's like, oh, I must have accidentally let their cat out. So he grabbed this random orange cat, <laughs> dropped it in our front door and closed the door. And I'm, I'm sitting on the couch and I see... I see an orange cat there and I wasn't really paying attention but then I see another orange cat and they walk up to each other and I thought I was like fucking hallucinating or something <laughs> but I had to run over and grab this uh, I grabbed Zyler and then the guy realized he had messed up and he grabbed the stranger the cat, and, cat. But, but like Zyler was like, <laughs> like his world was fuck? shook like <laughs> I'm not sure if you thought that he was, was looking so in a mirror funny. I looked that up on the security footage after and just saw like the worker like lifting up this random cat and yeah. putting it in our house <laughs> shutting the door and going back to his truck <laughs> yeah yeah so we was... haven't lost our cats but we've had other random cats put, <laughs> put in our house <laughs> that's right uh, all right how do you convince your mom to buy you a cat how, how did that work for you Christine when I was 15 yeah did it take a lot of convincing um so i studied a lot like i i had books on hamsters rabbits and cats i literally <laughs> like for christmas i would ask for like books on how to raise animals so i remember having like a hamster book and the whole idea was that i was gonna get a hamster first but then they just decided like that's just dumb we'll just get her a cat i guess i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but i was like pre fully prepared to get a hamster and showed and tried to prove that like i'd researched all the breeds where to get the hamster and and like how to take care of the hamster and then i did the same thing for a rabbit and then a cat so okay. maybe if you just show your parents yeah, you that, showed you were serious yeah, that you it. put a lot of work into it you know what's expected and it's not just like oh i want a fun cat because like my friend has one so i want one you know like you got to show yeah. that you're going to be responsible for it and the types of things that you will need to do to take care of it who who's gonna buy all, all the all the cat litter who's gonna buy the cat food is it gonna be you like if it's your animal maybe it's your responsibility you'll have to kind yeah. of decide or negotiate with your parents how that's gonna work out too right because mm -hmm. maybe part of the reason why parents don't want their kids to get animals is because like they're like i don't need this additional expense right like that is a big yeah. part aside from responsibility it's the expense and responsibility if you sh prove to your parents that you're willing to take care of that at least to some degree that right. should probably help you be persuasive i would like yes. to think yeah. but that didn't work for me i feel uh, yeah my sister begged our parents to get a dog and that just but did she do research and prove that she had documented what breed makes most sense how she was going to support it financially <laughs> i mean she had volunteered to at like a vet's office i feel like she had put in the work i don't really know why my parents never Aww. went for it yeah Boo. So sometimes it, <laughs> Mom sometimes, and Dad, boo. Boo. so sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but we can't guarantee that that your your mom will let you yeah. get a cat but the cool thing is when you're 18 or whenever you leave the house you can, you can uh, do whatever the fuck you want <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can get that cat yeah get a cat that's what i'm gonna do when i'm 18 i'm gonna get a cat
Never mind going to bars. <laughs> who, who, who cares about drinking? I just want a kitty cat. <laughs> All right. Another question from uh, Eleanor Holbrook. Do you ever take off their collars and have them run around naked and yell, you're naked at them while they do so? Here. Let's do it right now. <laughs> He's not going to run Zyler, around. Zyler, you're naked. You're naked. <laughs> you know, because they're indoor cats, I've seen the question, like, why do we put a collar on them even, right? I but guess you, there's always the off chance they do get out somehow and you do want to have I that think, information yeah, on them. That's the number one reason, especially when I lived with roommates. Sure. So Xyler first got a collar because I was I did not 100% trust my roommates to like always make sure that the cat was inside as mm -hmm. much as I put a sign on the door and like made sure everyone understood you can't let this cat outside. Yeah. Um, I had my phone number, my email and his name on the tag just in case he did get out. Yeah. yeah, so it was a safety precaution. I know too, you you like being able to hear them. So there's like a little yeah. bell on their collar. That developed later, but in the beginning it was like a security precaution. Sure. And then the cats just got used to wearing a collar. Like, look, I took Xyler's collar off two minutes ago and he's still sniffing it and he wants it back on. Like oh, he wants it he's, back He's on. looking at it, he's like, why isn't this on my neck? I miss my necklace. <laughs> we take it off sometimes and just like scratch their neck and clearly they like that. To, uh, to brush them sometimes yeah. we'll take off yeah. their colors um, <laughs> but i guess now they wear them because they're kind of used to them we're used to them because we can actually hear the bell so it just it's comforting to be like oh i can hear xyler he's upstairs yeah yeah sometimes and, uh when christine takes off her clothes i yell at her you're naked you're naked and she runs around so <laughs> Oh my god, Ben. <laughs> the cats awful. are just sort of naked all the time, you know? It's they more special. Naked. They see us naked sometimes, and that's the weirder thing. You do? <laughs> Don't show your daughter you're <laughs> naked. <laughs> all right, and last question Have you ever considered fostering cats for the SPCA? <gasps> Or are Menchie and Xyler enough for you? I like I love the idea of fostering like six baby kittens. Yeah. But I struggle with two things. First is giving them up when the foster parent is yeah. over. And second is I don't know how I could do that while I have cats of my own, Menchie and Xyler, without the possibility of like infecting, you know, because yeah. that's a huge thing with foster cats or just any new cats. They might have like other Upper um, respiratory infections inf and just like, like Munchie has. Yeah. So I don't want to put my own cats at risk because I'm taking yeah. care of, of others. It's just not fair to them. So yeah. that's like a huge reason why I just can't. Yeah, it's something we've talked about potentially wanting to do one day, though, right? Maybe getting a third cat isn't in the cards anytime soon. But I could see us at some point down the road if we had you know, if, if other obligations in our life slow down, maybe we just want to spend a bunch of time fostering cats. That could be a cool, a cool thing to do. And we yeah. should note that, like, I know times are really strange right now. Uh, maybe a lot of, like, I know, like, a lot of pet stores or pet adoption places aren't physically open. Yeah. But my understanding is a lot of these places are doing, like, virtual tours or you can see online, like, what cats are up for adoption. And they're still cats that need rescue right now so i think it's still very important that if, if you want to support the local cat rescue in your area definitely still do that there's still people rescuing and and uh, yeah. raising cats and kittens so there's still cats out there that need homes yeah yeah and now is a great time um to you know start raising a cat honestly if, if you're home more because that's the best time so you don't have to leave the cat yeah yeah so there's also other ways that we can help support rescue cats which we've done in the past like maybe we it just doesn't make sense for us to like get bunches a bunch of foster kittens in our sure. house uh, but we support our local cat cafe and we've raised humane some money society for a, a few society. smaller rescues yeah money isn't always the answer to these problems yeah i guess is the point like but uh yeah maybe we kitten season's coming up we'll we'll reach out to some of the some of our contacts in the community and see see what would help yeah Is there anything we didn't answer i don't know a lot a lot of cat questions there. everyone yeah most questions are just they want to know if we're getting another cat and <laughs> yeah those, that was right like now. half the questions are you getting another i cat? mean like it used to be are, when are you gonna have a baby like that's just the common question that any female on the internet gets but now they know me and now they're like when are you getting another cat <laughs> thank you guys i appreciate it yeah Zyler, right. are you gonna is Zyler gonna say the outro no i just sorry i just had to quickly say sorry to dr mike we were gonna have him on today but uh <laughs> but the cat segment went a little longer than expected but uh, we, we maybe, already had maybe another week yeah. yeah 
Sorry, Dr. Mike. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you next Taco Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see, see y'all later. Bye. Meow. <laughs>